Here we have a microwave emitter. We've got a beam splitter made out of hardboard, which allows 50% of the microwave radiation to pass straight through and 50% of it to be reflected in this direction. Here we have a reflector and here we have another reflector. So the 50% of the microwaves that pass on this path reflect off this mirror and come back. Uh, this beam splitter, 50% of them are reflected to the receiver. The other 50% go straight through and we don't care about those. So the microwaves that are reflected and travel to this reflector reflect back. 50% of them pass straight through. The other 50% are reflected back that way and we don't care about those. So you end up with about 50% of the microwave radiation ending up at the detector and half of that is via this mirror, and the other half of that is via this mirror. Here I've got a microammeter connected to the detector so that we can see the signal, the, um, the intensity of microwaves that are arriving at this antenna over here. I've got a ruler here so I can measure the position of this reflector. This is an interferometer. As I move the mirror, you can see that the numbers on the micro... Mic Microammeter change, they drop down, but then they increase again. And they drop down and increase again, drop down, increase again, drop down, increase again, in a fairly regular pattern. And we can use this to determine the wavelength of the microwaves. So let's just pick a place where it's at a maximum, so about there-ish. And we can make a note of the fact that that is at 87 centimetres on my ruler. In fact, I'll make a note that it's at 13 centimetres on my ruler because that way I'm on an increasing scale as I go this way. So at 13 centimetres, I have a maximum. Let's count 10 more maxima. So minima, maxima, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's about, let's just put it back where it was at a maximum, about there-ish I think was ten. And that's twenty-seven centimetres. Now twenty-seven minus thirteen is fourteen, so fourteen centimetres was ten of these spacings between maxima and the next maxima, but that's fourteen centimetres additional distance there and back. So that's an additional 28 centimetres that the electromagnetic radiation has travelled on this path to get 10 maxima, 10 additional maxima. So that's 28 centimetres divided by 10, giving us 2.8 centimetres as the wavelength, which is exactly what it says it should be, 2.8 centimetres. So that's a great success. Right, to understand what's going on, let's use a little graphical aid like this. Let's imagine I've got this representing the microwaves travelling via one of these directions, and this is going to represent the microwaves travelling by the other route. And if the distance on both routes is exactly the same, then when the microwaves arrive, they arrive perfectly in phase. But if the distance between those two arms is half a wavelength, the path difference is half a wavelength, you're going to get destructive interference. And if the path difference is a multiple of one wavelength, an integer multiple of one wavelength, you're going to get constructive interference. So the path difference between one maxima and the next maxima is lambda. That's the wavelength, one wavelength. And the next one, two lambda. And the next one, three lambda, and so on. But don't forget that the electromagnetic radiation had to travel to the mirror and back. So that means that the increased distance of the mirror to get the next maxima was half a wavelength. Hence, 14 centimetres is 28 centimetres additional path length representing 10 wavelengths, 2.8 centimetres wavelength. Now this design of interferometer was originally suggested by James Clerk Maxwell as a way of examining his electromagnetic waves. Um, so if I can zoom in, hopefully, ooh, there, his electromagnetic waves. You can do another experiment to investigate the wavelength of microwaves by using the same microwave emitter over here, the same antenna, and I'm just using the strength thing on here rather than using a separate ammeter, and a single reflector. 
The microwaves will travel in this direction, reflect off the reflector and come back. And so the microwaves that are reflected will interfere with the microwaves that are being emitted. And where you have reinforcement or constructive interference, you're going to get a stronger signal. And where you have cancellation, destructive interference, you're going to get a weaker signal. And it's the same principle with the waves cancelling out or reinforcing each other. And all we do is move this around and measure the distance we move it and count how many maxima and minima. And otherwise, it's the same idea. So I'll just move it. I won't take the measurements. But as I move it, just watch the needle. So you can see it dropping and rising, dropping and rising, dropping and rising.